fraternity permanently banned where student dies. Two fraternity chapters face sanctions of hazing and alcohol policies. University imposes new regulations and restrictions on parties after student dies from alcohol poisoning. These are the top stories when Googling fraternity news, all published within a week of each other. There are a few main reasons college students decide to rush and join Greek life. Paying for your friends while joining a brotherhood or a sisterhood, right? What about throwing parties every weekend and having pledges do your dishes? That's usually what pops into your parents' heads when you tell them you want to rush. I remember trying to explain to my Middle Eastern parents that I wanted to join a fraternity my freshman year. I used all the tricks in the book. Mom, I swear, it's an engineering fraternity. I won't have to buy my books. <laughs> Baba, I promise we don't just party every weekend. Sometimes we just hang out and talk on Saturday nights. My favorite was having to explain to them how we went to Las Vegas every Memorial weekend and had a formal banquet dinner. <laughs> Mom, I swear, we just get 25 hotel rooms on the strip and we just hang out and, and give away awards to all the high achievers. It's not that big of a deal. Man, you should have seen the puzzled look on their faces. That confusion and disagreement went on for quite a while. The media grasps the negative stereotypical headlines and repeatedly splashes it across the public. What most fail to realize is all the good that fraternities and sororities do for the community and for others. The average Greek chapter is held to a higher standard, donating almost 7 million hours and over $54 million every year to multiple nonprofits. According to a USA Today article, studies show it, the graduation rates being 20% higher among Greeks compared to non-Greeks. That study also showed that 85% of Fortune 500 executives, as well as the first female astronaut, were all a part of Greek life at one time. Since 1910, 85% of US Supreme Court justices and even 76% of US senators were all a part of Greek life prior to beginning their careers. That professional and social network built is life-changing for an individual. After pledging and joining a fraternity my first quarter in my undergraduate studies, I began to see immediately that there was much more to Greek life than throwing parties and having that frat mindset. Gaining leadership positions while leading a chapter to continuous success turned out to be the real meaning of Greek life, for me at least. Here's what really happened during my experience. It wasn't always fun and games. I saw a brother end up in the hospital due to a near-fatal accident, and our chapter raised over $12,000 in a short amount of time to help his family with the hospital expenses. Where were those headlines? I supported the chapter when we lost a brother to an unforeseen circumstance and came back when we lost another brother shortly thereafter to a fatal car accident, neither of these deaths being fraternity-related. Did that miss the evening news? And then, of course, there were the better days, where I've seen several alumni pass down internships and job opportunities to our younger members, and I've attended leadership schools where thousands of leaders have gathered and shared their wealth of knowledge. A memory I have was an opportunity I was given to travel across the country and sit down with the Supreme Council of my national fraternity. They chose the top 30 undergraduate leaders among all active members, and the bonds created that weekend were unforgettable. To this day, I still talk to the members I met that week. Shortly before this opportunity, I was awarded with the highest under, honor an undergraduate can receive in my fraternity by our chapter advisor. He allowed my parents to pin the awarded badge on me at our holiday dinner, and to be honest, it wasn't until that moment that I saw my parents' faces light up with joy and excitement because they were finally beginning to see what the fraternity has done for their son and their future. Another story I tell from my presidency was an interview I had with an LA Times reporter back in March of 2015. He interviewed me regarding the fraternity at a university in the South regarding a racial incident. Oklahoma frat's racist chant highlights the exclusionary roots of Greek life. 
was the headline across all news channels. A racist event splashed across every media outlet, and the culprits were members of our fraternity, my fraternity, that fraternity I represented day in and day out. While one chapter should not reflect the inner workings, ethics, and morals of an entire fraternity or Greek life as a whole, this one really hurt. Most importantly, I wanted that reporter, their audience, and the country as a whole to know that our fraternity's mem membership represented a strong ethnic diversity reflective of our campus population. Many people join for the wrong reasons. They hear these stereotypes and they want to be a part of that popular group that just parties and drinks on the weekends, but they're really missing what the real reason of being in Greek life is all about. During high school and my early college years, my family struggled financially. I made a promise to myself that one day I would pay it all back to my parents by making them proud. I told myself I'd lock in a full-time career prior to graduation, and if it wasn't for my fraternity, this would not have been possible. I look back on the morals and traditions, not only from what I've built in my fraternity, but also what I've adopted from my culture. All of this molding me into the person I've become today. I'm able to hold casual and professional conversations while leading executive and upper management meetings, all with that confidence I've built within the fraternity. I have the ability to use the alumni and undergraduate network to pass down jobs and vice versa. I know I have a strong and loving family foundation, even when they don't 100% agree with me, and that makes me stronger, more confident. Right before graduating from Cal Poly Pomona, I co-founded a startup with my fraternity brother, using that network and knowledge we gained in our undergraduate years. It revolves around creating custom quality apparel for college organizations, including Greek life, clubs on campuses, and other startups. We look to support other individuals looking to make their mark in a company, which is why the majority of our team is still in college. The college network has endless opportunities as you're meeting people from all over the world in every class you take and every activity you participate in. Take a moment to think about your best friend and what his or her parents do for a living. What about your larger group of friends and what each one of their parents do for a living? Now think about every single person you in interact with on a daily basis and what every one of their parents do for a living. When you think about how large our networks naturally are, it's mind-boggling. So did I pay for my friends? No. I paid a very small amount to be a part of a very large national organization that has only given me endless opportunities for myself and my future. That friends part was just an added bonus. It's up to the future of Greek life and others in their undergraduate studies to build that positive network for their future. As Tom Ford said, the most important things in life are the connections you make with others. Thank you.